What's up, ladies and gents? It is I, Coloss, and welcome back to Heavy Rain. Now, in the last episode, we learned even more about the Origami Killer. Uh, Scott Shelby visited a man, uh, a convenience store clerk, and he revealed to Scott Shelby that uh, when his son was taken, he received a shoebox with some weird items inside, and we also learned that Ethan Mars has now come into possession of his own shoebox, and we are just about to discover what is inside said box. We were also introduced to our fourth and final playable character, Madison Page. Um, we don't know her name in this story yet, um, but I do since i played this game before. Um, so we learned that she has a very strange and disturbing nightmare where... Um, she was, you know, running around her apartment and trying to get away from these masked uh, individuals. And uh, it was quite a scary scene, but it was just a dream, so that's okay. Um, so we'll discover more about uh, her story and sort of how she ties into all this. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and see what's in this box. I know Ethan himself is very interested to see what its contents are. And yes, I would I would be shaking too if I were him. Looks like we've got a cornucopia of goodies. Well, they're not good, so I don't know why I would call them goodies, but we do have some items here. Okay, so it looks like we've got four, no, five. I think five. Looks like five different origami figures, each with its own corresponding number. And we've got, it looks like a memory card, and I think a phone? It looks like a phone. I don't really remember. Or a PDA or something. And we've also got a pistol, which should be interesting. Um, so let's take a look at... Um, Let's take a look at the pistol. Alright, so... Pretty standard pistol, I guess. Um, so let's take a look at... the very first origami figure. Are you prepared to show courage to save your son? Joe's Garage and Parking Lot, 4988 Roosevelt Avenue, Lexington. So this looks like a series of trials that we must accomplish in order to save Sean. Let's take a look at this memory card. It's a very powerful line. Five origami figures, each figure is a trial. Each trial provides letters. The letters reveal an address. So that's a very powerful line. How far are you willing to go to save someone you love? And, um, yeah. Well, we're prepared to do anything because Sean is our son! Damn it! So let's go show some courage and save our kid. You can see Ethan is it's all hyped up and probably terrified. I would be too. Um, okay, yeah, let's hide the box just to be safe. I 
So Ethan's been in the news, and you never know what you know is going to happen. So let's hide that box. So now we get to control Norman Jaden, once again. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why he gives them an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where That's does all that sick. get us? Uh, okay. Let's stay calm. We don't have... We don't need to get angry at Blake just yet. To be familiar with his behavior. That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life at stake here. Continue, Jaden. Thanks, Cap'n. Uh, let's, let's talk about geo profile. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And, and what size is this, uh, zone? <laughs> For the moment, about 10 square mile. Ah, oh, great. There must be 10,000 people live in that sort of area. You gonna question them one by one? Cheeky bastard. Okay, let's still remain calm. The more clues we get, the more we can reduce the zone. We can then cross-check it with our list of suspects and identify the killer. Okay, let's talk about One rainfall. detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days. But the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims were drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. Ah, damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, we gotta get off our asses and find him. What the hell do you think I'm doing? Okay, you know Blake, what? Go for it. I've had just about enough of your shit. You've been chasing this guy for what? Two years? And what are you caught, huh? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! What, well, you think you can do a better <laughs> fucking job than me with your psychology degree and your great glasses? Well, let me tell you something, pal. That don't mean zip when it comes to getting out there. You're just a fucking bureaucrat. Alright, calm down. I came calm here down. to find a killer. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do. With or without your fucking help. Fucking asshole! That's enough! <laughs> You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours. <sighs> so we've got only a short amount of time in order to find Sean. So Blake and Jaden better put their differences aside. Even though I kind of instigate, well, I didn't instigate, but I kind of fueled the fire a little bit. But you know, he was pissing me off, so I had to put him in his in his place. But let's go ahead and knock on. Okay, yes. All right, sorry, I forgot. Okay, it's just gonna knock for me. That's all right. Boy, he hates my guts right now. <laughs> no answer. We waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. <laughs> there is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. 
Call the cops. <laughs> Well, he's a stand-up officer, isn't he? Oh, boy. Cheery. Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. He's a God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I'd come to Earth <laughs> to persecute him. Real twisty. Man. It's a lot of crucifixes. Candles are still lit. He should be back soon. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I would never leave the house with, uh candles still burning. <laughs> That's a recipe for disaster. Although I don't really have any candles, so... <laughs> don't gotta worry about that! So he's got a bunch of different books. And there's our Lord and Savior. It's actually a creep... kind of a creepy picture. I think just because it's green. I don't know. I would be terrified to sleep by all those candles. <laughs> I mean, I'm not really a restless sleepler, sleepler, restless sleeper, but I could still like picture myself just like tossing and turning, and then like a hand goes flying somewhere. I wake up from a nightmare, like Madison Page, and uh, the candle just falls over, or I burn myself, or something like that. So. Whoa. Hmm. That's a bit. Whoop, oh, cheese. <laughs> All right, I'll go investigate. <laughs> Of supplements. Hmm. Nope. Other way. There we go. Hmm. Mr. Clean, I see. What was that? Oh, wait. Were there... Gosh, he's got even more bottles. Let's see. I mean, you can't really tell what any of that stuff is. Well, one's a multivitamin, so that's not too bad. <laughs> oh, here we go. Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Naaman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Okay. Um... Why all the crucifixes? You afraid of something? The hour is nigh. And the wrath of God shall strike men down. I'm preparing for the end of the world. Where do you work, Nathaniel? Do you have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. Okay, what is your alibi? Nathaniel, do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4.30 p.m.? Here? I was here. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. No, I was alone. 
What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? Oh boy. We know who talks to you, don't he's, we, Nathaniel? Or we both he's gonna know start who talks to you. Screwing with him. Don't speak that name. What does he say to you, Nathaniel? I can't Blake, yeah. what are you doing? You mustn't talk about it. He orders you to go and find new prey, doesn't he? He needs okay, more you're and more. Leave him alone. No. No. You mustn't mention him. You'll bring him here. He Curtis, told you to go and find shit. that kid are in the you park. Out of your mind? The voice has tormented you all night long. You wanted them to stop, didn't you, Nathaniel? Stop. Okay, you need stop. to calm the That's hell enough. down. So you obeyed them to make them stop. You took that boy with you and you drowned him. Isn't that right? No! Stop! Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you gonna confess, you bastard? You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun and oh, smash you to your father in hell. He is the son oh, of Satan. He was sent to Earth to destroy shoot, us. For Christ's sake, shoot! No, 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 no. We gotta, we gotta calm this down. Okay. Calm uh, down, the tension. Sure? Nobody here wants to hurt you. Put the gun down. Um. You're gently put the gun down on the floor. Team, you shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power. Concentrate on my voice, Nathaniel. Listen only to my voice. Christ, all powerful. Defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire. And may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. Man. Yeah, Blake's an asshole, but he's not the devil. Um, Enough, order. Nathaniel, put the gun down immediately. Back away, slowly. I'm not gonna shoot him. Now drop the gun. Drop it, Nathaniel. Put your hands on your head. Turn around. Motherfucker! In the name of the Lord, I exorcise thee, Satan. Okay, freak, the show's over. You're under arrest. Pretty damn cool under the circumstances. I would have just shot him. A gun isn't the answer to every problem, Blake. Maybe not, but most of the time it helps. <sighs> I didn't shoot him because... Blake seemed like he could have handled himself. Especially when he was turning around like that, because he was that close to him. Because Blake wanted to hurt him anyway, so he would have had reflexes to do something to him. If Nathaniel did have a gun. A second gun, anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm usually pretty good with negotiating things. That's pretty cool. Um. <laughs> well, not with Lauren Winter, but... <laughs> With uh, Mr. Hassan, I think was his name. And then Andrew, and then Nathaniel just now, so. Can't be too bad. So now we're taking over as Scott once again, investigating. I assume is uh, another parent of a victim. Did I hear a baby cry? Yeah, okay. So hopefully there's somebody home. Okay. So let's find another way inside. What does that say? Destruct? 
Lives of Destruction. Yeah, something like that. Whatever. <laughs> awesome thrash metal band from Germany. Okay. <laughs> um, just came out with a new album, by the way. Fun little tidbit there. Oh, this is the most recent, uh... This is both. Okay. Anybody home? So this is the m the mother of the most recent victim. Hello, little cutie. Who? You looking for your mama? Okay, this note looks very suspicious. Oh, Jesus. Okay, we gotta find this lady. Okay, um... Oops. Mrs. Bowles! Mrs. Bowles, are you there? Oh, the door's locked. That's not a good sign. Oh, shit. Oh, crap. We gotta save this lady. Mrs. Bowles! Mrs. Bowles, can you hear me? Wake up! Ooh. Oh, that's... Wake uh... up! I don't want to go to the hospital, please. Okay. You got something around here I can dress this one with? Yeah, I think so. Okay, don't move. I'll be right back. Ugh. Death and suicide is never good, but and any way that people do it is horrific and is terrible and the most Let's horrible see. thing in the world. But this, and this, and this. There's something about the wrists. I don't know. It, it really disturbs me. I mean, any way is disturbing and terrible, but... I'm here for you, Susan. You'll be all right. I'll take care of you. Stay with me, Susan. Susan, do you hear me? Susan, stay with me. Can you hear me? Stay with me. Okay, come on. There, I done what I can. That should stop the bleeding. Well, luckily, the wounds aren't too deep. Hey, how are you feeling? My baby. My baby needs me. Right. You stay there. I'll take care of the baby. Okay? Do you know what to do? With a baby, I mean. I'm a private eye. There's nothing I can't do. <laughs> <laughs> Scott is awesome. Her name is Emily. Gotcha. That's one of my best friend's names. Emily's a good name. Oh, yeah. We don't want to touch her with all that. Hi there, Emily. So, 
What seems to be the problem, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh! Going by the smell? I got a pretty good idea. <laughs> I've, uh, I've got a sister and she um, had a baby a okay. little over a year ago. How do you do this again? And um, she's, she's got a niece and she's the cutest baby in the world. Oh my gosh, she's adorable. I've never really been around, like, little babies much, so, um, she was like the, f oh, that's a weird combination. There you combination. go, fresh new baby. Um, fresh new baby. That's Whee! Right, right, Emily? She's so cute. Um, but yeah, she's just the cutest baby in the world, and, um, I was hey, never around babies very much. I thought was <laughs> so it was kind of new for me to be around a baby. Um, but now I feel, you know, f fairly comfortable. Um, but yeah, babies are so cute. Like, even though they, like, don't really do much, like, when they start to get a little older, like, once they turn one year old and, like, um, things like that, they become, like, really fun, and they're just fun to, like, watch them, like, run around and play and do all sorts of things, so. I guess I better warm this thing up. I'm definitely not ready for kids of my own right now. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I ever will have kids, but um, they're definitely fun, and they're, a, I cannot speak from first-hand experience, but they're very, you know, I don't want to say difficult to take care of, but it's a lot to take care of a baby. It's a lot to do, and a lot to, you know, deal with and take care of them. So, I give props for people that have kids out there, or, you know, all these, you know, single parents. If you're a single parent, or you, you have a kid, or you know you, you are a parent, and you have someone there to help you out, still, that's a lot of work, and I give credit to anybody who has a kid and is taking care of them, and anything like that. You the real MVP! Okay. <laughs> so let's feed little oh, Miss Emily. Are you hungry? Huh? You hold on. I'll just tilt this bottle a little bit, so you don't choke. <laughs> Scott can really do anything. He can beat up a guy, he can feed a baby, he can change a diaper, he can talk down a, a, a robber. He's the man. Oh, good job, Emily. Hmm? You're feeling good now, right? <laughs> now, I'm gonna rock you very gently so you can have a nice little snooze. Okay. All right. <laughs> She's adorable. Very, very gentle. Okay, there we go. Good job, Scotty Shelby boy. You did it. Okay. Now, let's go check on Mrs. Bulls. Gotta make sure she's okay. Thanks for looking after my baby. I didn't want to leave her. I just couldn't cope anymore. Just not having Jeremy around. He was such a good boy. I can't understand why anyone would want to hurt him. Do you take care of this baby on your own? Doesn't Jeremy's father live with you anymore? He disappeared. The day after Jeremy. Hmm. I don't know what happened to him. Maybe... Maybe he couldn't take it. 
Ever since I've had to look after Emily all on my own and I couldn't do it anymore. I understand. Did your husband say anything before he disappeared? Did he leave a note or something? No. He left the house without a word and there was just the cell phone. A cell phone? Hmm. Yeah, I, I found a cell phone in his dresser. I'm sure it wasn't his. I'd never seen it before. I tried to turn it on, but it didn't work. Hmm. Do you still have it? Like, must be like the one that Ethan yeah, has. Yeah, it's, um, it's in a drawer in the living room. You can have it if you'd like. I'm sure it's of more use to you than to me. Do you have any family or anybody to help you? Yeah. My mother. I didn't want to ask her for anything. We don't really get along. But I guess I'm out of options. Well, look after yourself. And Emily. I will. I promise. All right. That could have been a bad situation. Good luck, Emily. You take care of your mama. <laughs> She's so cute. Kinda looks like the one that Ethan had, but maybe a little bit different. I like his car too. <laughs> it's like nothing that you really see out anymore. I feel like there was something else I was supposed to do there, but I don't remember. Because it's definitely not a good idea to leave her alone. Especially after that, but... <laughs> Baby Master! <laughs> Best trophy ever. But I'm glad that Scott was able to save her and take care of Emily, so that's good. Alright, so seems like a good spot to stop um so yeah that was this episode of heavy rain uh we learned a little bit more about the origami killer and um yeah <laughs> so ethan took a look at the box and realized that sean is in fact the present victim of the origami killer which sucks but in the next episode we're gonna see him take care uh take on the first trial uh in order to save sean and we also learned a little bit more about the most recent victims uh families and uh things like that and we learned sorry i'm just trying to think of what we just did when i just played it um Jaden and blake um sort of interviewed um a potential suspect but didn't look like that turned out to be anything um so yeah, in the next episode, we're going to pick up uh, with Ethan. We're going to see what he gets into in the next episode. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I hope you are looking forward to the next one. And I thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.